Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss radial basis function in artificial neural network with a simple example. When you talk about data in machine learning, data exists in two form. The data can be either linearly separable or non-linearly separable. In this example, you can notice here the data which is shown in the first diagram is linearly separable because if you draw a straight line, the data can be divided into two groups here. But when you look at the second and third diagram, whenever we draw a straight line, we cannot divide this particular data into two groups. We need to draw a non-linear curve so that we can divide this particular data into two groups over here. Whenever we have a linearly separable data, we can use a single layer perceptor network to build a machine learning model. But whenever we have not linearly separable data, we cannot use single layer perceptor network. We need to use a multi-layer perceptor network so that we can divide this particular data into multiple number of groups here. Whenever we talk about multi-layer perceptor network, it contains one input layer, one output layer, one or more hidden layers in this case. Radial basis function is a type of multi-layer perceptor network which has one input layer, one output layer, and strictly one hidden layer. So multi-layer perceptor network contains one or more hidden layers, but when you talk about radial basis function, it contains input and output layer, that's for sure, but the number of hidden layers are exactly one in radial basis function over here. This is how the radial basis function looks like. This is the input layer, this is the output layer, and there is exist only one hidden layer in this case. Now, what we do in this uh, radial basis function is, Whenever we have a nonlinear data, we want to convert that particular nonlinear data into linearly separable data. For that reason, what we do is, at each and every neuron at the hidden layer, we use something called as nonlinear radial basis function as an activation function, so that we can convert that particular data into higher dimension over here. For example, if you have a two-dimensional data, which is nonlinearly separable, we convert that uh, two-dimensional data into three-dimension so that it will become a linearly separable data. For example, if it is already three dimension, we will convert it into higher dimension so that a non-linear data is converted into linear data. Once it is converted into linear data, it will be classified with the help of output layer neuron over here. So this is the main idea behind this particular radial basis function in artificial neural network. The radial basis function is used in interpolation, function approximation, time series prediction, classification tasks, as well as system control. There are different type of radial basis function exist in artificial neural network. The first one is the popular radial basis function is Gaussian radial basis function, which looks something like this. H of X is always equal to E raised to minus X minus C bracket square divided by R square here, where X is the input, C is the center and R is the radius over here. Similarly, there exists another uh, radial basis function that is known as multi-quadratic radial basis function, which is given by h of x is equal to square root of r square plus x minus c bracket square divided by r. Again, r is the radius, x is the input, and c is the center in this particular case. Now, we understood what is a radial basis function and what are the different uh, radial basis function exist in artificial neural network. Now we will try to understand the algorithm of radial basis function in artificial neural network. The input to a radial basis function contains a vector of inputs like x1, x2 till xn. The output is yn in this particular case. The radial basis function neural network looks something like this. There is an input layer, there is an output layer, there exists a single hidden layer. Now what we need to do is from each of these particular hidden layer to this particular output layer neuron, we need to assign some weights over here. Those particular weights should be in the range of minus one to plus one. Randomly, we assign these particular weights at the initial stage. In the second step, that is known as the forward phase, what we do over here is we calculate the input and output of the input layer. So we have this particular input layer. For this particular input layer, we calculate the input as well as the output. Actually, in radial basis function, we don't do anything. At the input layer, the direct transfer function is used here. That is nothing but whatever the input is there, that is xi is assigned to ii, that is the input. And this particular input is assigned to this particular output. The meaning of this one is whatever the input is there, the same thing is the output of this particular input layer neuron over here. For example, if you have zero here, the output is also zero here. If you have one here, the output is one over here and so on. So that is what the thing we do in this particular forward phase over here. 
Now, once you calculate the output of for this particular the input layer neuron, what we do is this output will be given as an input to this particular hidden layer neurons. At this particular hidden layer neurons, as said earlier, we use something called as the radial basis function, either Gaussian radial basis function or multi-quadratic radial basis function, so that we can convert the non-linearly separable data into linearly separable data here. So for that reason, what we do here is uh, at each and every hidden layer neuron, we use uh, rad radial basis function. In this case, I have shown a Gaussian radial basis function, and then we will calculate the output of those particular hidden neuron. For example, if J is the uh, one hidden layer neuron, we calculate the output something like this, E raised to minus X minus CJ bracket square divided by R square, where X is the input, CJ is the center of that particular uh, hidden layer neuron, and R is the radius over here. Now, once you calculate the output at each of these particular hidden layer neurons, that output will become an input to this particular output layer neuron here. Now, this is the output of uh, hidden layer neuron and this particular weight. Both will be considered to calculate the output of this particular output layer neuron. The function looks something like this. The blue J K, where J is the jth layer uh, hidden layer neuron and K is the output layer a neuron in this case. So in this case, we have only one output layer neuron. So that uh, K is equal to one over here. But if you, if you have more than one uh, hidden uh, output layer neuron, this particular summation will take uh, k from 1 to the number of output layer neurons over here. So wjk is the weight from jth hidden layer neuron to kth output layer neuron in this case. hjx is nothing but the jth hidden layer uh, neurons output here. That is nothing but uh, h1x output multiplied by w1 plus h2x output multiplied by w2 dot 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 hmx output multiplied by wm that is nothing but the output at this particular output layer neuron in this case that is denoted by fk of x in this particular case now once you calculate the output at this uh, output layer neuron if you are happy with that particular output you can stop over here whatever the weights assigned to this particular uh, edges that is the edge from hidden layer neuron to output layer neuron that is the final one if the calculated output whatever the output you have calculated here that output is not satisfactory what we need to do is we need to perform something called as the backward phase over here. So what we do in backward phase is we use the back propagation algorithm and we update this particular weights. I have already discussed what is back propagation algorithm and how to update the weights with the help of back propagation algorithm. Link for that video is given in the description below. With the help of back propagation algorithm, what we do is we update this particular weights. Once you update this particular weights, the output uh, at this particular output layer neuron is calculated again using this particular formula. Because weights were updated, this output is uh, uh, same here because we have not updated the output at uh, hidden layer. But the weights were updated here. With the help of this updated weights, we get the different output here. So that is what we will get the second time. So we will get the second time output here. Again, if you're happy, you can stop here. Otherwise, again, we need to perform one more backward phase. That is nothing but we need to update the weights with the help of back progression algorithm. And again, we need to calculate the output at the output layer neuron. The same thing should be repeated again and again, unless and until we get the satisfactory output over here. So once you get the satisfactory output, whatever the weights assigned over here, they will be the final learned parameter of radial basis function in artificial neural network. I hope the concept of uh, radial basis function in artificial neural network is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.